Should I try out Genshin? A question that I've surprisingly heard quite a fair few times in the four years that I've spent mucking through scraps of artifacts and praying to RNG Jesus to not lose a 50-50 in this game. Most of the time, my answer is relatively neutral and easy. Go and try it out and see what you think. But for the sake of this video, I want to dive a little bit deeper into the question and help people figure out if they should try the game or avoid wasting their time on it. Let's just get right into it. The name's Leafy, and welcome back to Let's Talk Slow About Games, Genshin Edition. I want to start this off by eliminating the easier conundrums of the question, so I'm just going to quickfire it. If you say, game looks fun and I want to try it, then go make sure you have the space on your device. Trust me, you're going to want to do that. Download it right now and give it a try. The game's free, there's literally no downside to just trying it out. And all you need to do is give it a roundhouse kick on your device if you end up not liking it. Next one, you think the game looks fun, but you hate and despise open world games. Then I guess it's best if you don't try it. Genshin is notoriously map exploration heavy. And don't be tricked by the looks of this innocent map right here. You have random islands all the way over here, these subsections to explore, and a whole slew of underground and underwater exploration for you to do. If you don't like open world, you'd sooner throw your gaming device out of a window rather than completing the first chapter of the main story. Right, those were the easy and quickfire ones. Now let's get into the meat of the discussion and start with the scenarios where I would recommend playing Genshin to you. Let's say you understand gacha games, you understand what to expect from these types of games, and you love exploring massive open world maps. Then Genshin would be the game for you. Where the game would be hell for those who might like having to explore giant maps for achievement and overall completion, you've got all these regions and sub-areas to get 100% exploration status in. There are an insane amount of different ground levels that you'd get to dive into once you've completed most of the prologue stuff, and the amount of rewards you stand to gain will add to your satisfaction in managing to complete most of it, if not all of it. Puzzles and many open world mechanic exist in abundance of variety which keeps exploration experience very unique depending on which region or even sub-region that you are exploring. Farming for upgrade materials and general resources are also a big part of why exploration can really be fun. And it is an aspect that will be even more enjoyable if you have friends who still play this game on a regular. Probably a rather rare occurrence to find these days in the wild, but it's even more reason for me to say that if you do have a friend or two who still plays this game, then it's even more reason for me to recommend playing this game. Because not only is it that they can help you farm domains for materials in an easier capacity, but it is also because co-op exploration is something that can turn the more tedious parts of Genshin's grind into something that becomes such a fun pastime to do. On to the second recommendation scenario. If you're someone who's trying to find a game which does not employ the same old hack and slash or rather souls-like type of gameplay that many varieties of games have these days, then you'd probably enjoy Genshin's very unique team-based playstyle. The base of that uniqueness revolves around the elemental reaction mechanics that the game offers, which sees a range of reactions that stem from mixing elements such as Pyro, Hydro, and Wind that gives you a chance for you to explore very dynamic team compositions that essentially allows you to experiment many combos and team options using the kits and elements that will be up to your preferences. The depth between the amount of characters you have to play from coupled with the fact that each of them presents their own different playstyles makes for an extremely fun team building process, whilst moving away from the normal conventions of many other games' combat mechanics. Now, onto the last recommendation scenario, and personally my biggest reason as to why I still play this game is the story and the world building. For a game that has to cover a lot of bases, they most definitely do not like attention when it comes to storytelling and making sure that the lore of everything in the game stays in line with the plot's progression. Numerous conflicting factions, historical events, and many mysterious crevices that house this intriguing lore exist within the world itself, which complements the world exploration side of Genshin extremely well. Not only would you have the chance to explore hidden subregions and puzzles, but you also get to unearth the lost history of the world of Teyvat while you're at it. However, I have my own favorite part of the world building, because while I think the main story in itself is mostly impressive, bar the Inazuma arc, what really sets it apart from the other gacha stories is how well they are able to incorporate characters from different backgrounds of the lore and make them have connections 
relationships, and backgrounds that make sense. You'll see characters that ranges from knights, mercenaries, dancers, centuries years old gods, and even a child terrorist. The writers don't skip out on their backgrounds and made sure that most of them have an interesting stake within the lore of their region. Most of them has character quests and hangout events that serve to give us a peek into how their daily lives are, further building that connection we might feel towards each character as the MC. Oh, and just as a bonus recommendation, if you're someone who enjoys taking it easy and just listen to the game's soundtrack as you go through your gameplay, then you'd be more than happy with the quality of music that Genshin is able to provide you with. Yu Peng Chen is a godly composer, and while he is no longer part of the team, the marker that he has set for Genshin's musical quality proves to be a factor that no other new gen gachas have managed to even come in close to matching. Alright, we've gotten past the scenarios where I would recommend you to play this game, and it's gonna be time for me to discuss the scenarios in which I wouldn't be able to recommend this game to you. The number one scenario in my case will be if you don't know or dislike gacha games as a whole. To the more general video game market space, gacha games will forever have a rather awkward stance in the eyes of many people, especially when it comes to the more traditional gacha games which puts a lot more emphasis on pulling for different characters and the need to pull their copies to upgrade them. Many will be quick to dismiss that gacha games is just glorified gambling honestly, and quite frankly, there are many cases where they would have the merit to think of it that way. But I think this scenario can easily be argued against, for when you consider the fact that there are massive games such as the FIFA, or FC series I guess it's called now, that's main and most popular game mode revolves around endlessly pulling players out of packs without any way to guarantee getting the specific player that you wanted. So the glorified gambling side is not really a difference limited only to gacha games, yet it's still a prevalent reason as to why this might not be the kind of game you would want to play. However, the larger difference that I think is more vital to people's experience in gacha games is the way people expect to spend their time and progress in the game. Traditional games do not have an expectation to be played every day, while in most gacha games, daily login is such a big part of maintaining your account progression. While yes, there is nothing sacrilegious about you not doing that, and you most definitely can just log into gacha games every now and then, but compile that over an extended period of time, then you will feel the stunt in progress and how far you'll be left behind by either the game itself or other players. Here's the gist of it. The end goal of any gacha game is to collect premium currency through completing various quests, objectives, and events, and then use them to pull for new characters that you might want or need. In Genshin, to do a single pull attempt or wish in this case, cost you 160 primo gems, which is the premium currency of Genshin, while completing all your daily objectives in the game will net you a base amount of 60 gems. That means you will need to do 3 days worth of dailies to accumulate enough premium currency just to do one pull. So while missing 1 or 2 days doesn't seem all that bad, when you miss, let's say, consecutively 2 weeks or 14 days, that's enough for you to lose 840 gems due to inactivity alone. Quite substantial in the grand scheme of things, not even counting if there happen to be events or special gift gems that you can only collect by logging into the game that day. It's this casual commitment that I think might be a big turnoff for a lot of people, which is highly understandable honestly. So unless you understand what you might be missing out on if you don't spend that 15 to 20 minutes every day in Genshin and you are willing to deal with it, then it's probably best if you don't dip your feet into this sort of game. Because if you try to push it and end up falling completely out of the daily routine and eventually the game itself, all you'd have in the end is a dead account and quite frankly, a complete loss of time. Time that you could have probably spent playing in another game that you actually enjoy. The second scenario stems from a problem that many long-standing gacha games deal with when it comes to attracting newer players, which is the fact that it is rather difficult and time-consuming for starting players to catch up to the point where most people are at this state of the game. Honkai Impact 3rd was that game for me, where I sorta of wanted to try it, but the daunting task of having to push through all the leveling to catch up with the current state of the game just kinda turned me away. Genshin is a huge game in sheer content size, 
and it takes a long time for people to go slog through all the story and quest before eventually reaching that point where you can just comfortably play the game without having to think about lack of basic resource, game knowledge, and content accessibility. Another issue that's rather unique to Genshin is the fact that you need specific materials to upgrade characters from specific regions. Regions that you previously need to complete certain story quests first before you'd have a chance to unlock it. This may create a predicament where you'd be stuck not being able to upgrade your newly released and acquired characters, all because you don't have direct access to their upgrade materials. In all fairness to Hoyoverse though, they have tried combating this predicament by making random teleporters in the regions that players haven't gotten to, to be available to use without having to get there in the first place. So in my opinion, this predicament has a sound though rather tedious solution to it. But for those of you who might care about immersion and going through the story in a natural capacity, and are not willing to use these given teleporters, then you'd have to know the issues that you'd be facing. The final scenario where I wouldn't recommend this game is for those who are looking for games that would mechanically challenge you at the end. What I mean is, if you're looking for something that goes towards the level of difficulty that Souls-like games and ultra endgame JRPG levels will provide you with, then Genshin will not give you that. Though, no doubt, I can now confidently say that Genshin's endgame is incredibly fun with the addition of Imaginarium Theater. What these endgames test is more about your flexibility in team compositions and how much you can use the character elements that you have to deal with in tandem with specific reactions and playstyles that you need to utilize in certain levels. While there are some very rare cases where enemy Elise will have new moves that only shows up with increased aggressiveness, most of them will only either have an increase in HP and how hard they hit. There are scenarios where you would try to figure out all the boss mechanics and use that to time your iframes, but there are literally characters that allow you to ignore damage entirely, or just completely outheal all the damage done to you. So no matter how far you go with learning those boss mechanics just to dodge them, it will eventually lose all this intrigue and will just serve to feel like a complete waste of time at the end of it all. At the end of the day though, if all you want to do is just to try it out, then go ahead and dive right in. There are probably reasons I listed to play this game that ends up turning you away from the game, and there are probably reasons to not play the game that would end up making you want to play the game. It really is up to your own preferences and experience. I'm just here to give you guys both sides of the coin and perspectives. Personally, I think Genshin is the perfect kind of casual game for you to play if you just want a solid game that gives you enough light objectives to spend a minuscule amount of time in the day, yet also feel as if you're progressing bit by bit in the game. Couple that with great story, character design, music, and overall polish of the game, it's really the kind of game where you can just really take it easy and chill in. Even more so if you don't want to try too hard to keep up with the meta and whatnot, and just play to your own pace. That's about all I have for this video. Hope you guys have found it to be helpful or at the very least have been able to take something from it. Leave a like if you did and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Until the next video, my name's Leafy and I'll see you all next time. Sayonara.